Grace fans. Caught me reading my uh, Talladega program there. But howdy, race fans. Welcome to my little show about racing I like to call In the Pits with me, South Car Scott, here on the YouTube on Wednesdays when I feel like it because I have no sponsor to try to tell me what I should do. That, race fans, as you know, is my wife's job. Friday, as usual, there were practices to be watched. Uh, trucks and uh, Sprint Cup cars were at Martinsville, Virginia, a familiar but difficult short track, while the Formula One guys were practicing at a vastly redesigned track named for the Rodriguez brothers there in Mexico City for the first time in 23 years. World champion Lewis Hamilton spent uh, some of the time promoting the Mexican Grand Prix in the ring with masked wrestlers, uh, even throwing an appropriate block on one of the competitors there. Uh, I taped the uh, Sprint Cup qualifying while I got out uh, with my wife a little bit, but never really watched it after reading that the uh, Joker Logano was on the pole for Martinsville and that Dale Jr was starting about halfway back in 22nd. Also, part of the day was used uh, catching up there on Friday from last week. Uh, so, I have to apologize for blaming the big one uh, in uh, the Talladega truck race uh, last week there on Matt Tiff. Upon seeing the replay, Johnny Sauter's aggressive actions were clearly to blame for the melee and the Alabama gang super stretch back there. Sorry, Matt, but I do make up for my mistakes there. Uh, Friday, Friday was also leaf raking because it's time to welcome autumn. Okay, Saturday started with a couple of good practices for Dale Jr. there, uh, who would be starting, like I said, 22nd uh, for Sunday's race. Uh, reason I just, you know, skipped uh, watching qualifying there on Friday. Also, a positive for uh, Jr. was that his Camping World Truck Series driver, Cole Custer, in the Junior Motorsports Haas Automation Double Zero Silverado, qualified on the pole for Saturday's 200 lap undercard race there at Martinsville. Canadian and local driver, winner of the Summer Showdown and the Fall Classic, Cameron Haley started on the outside there on the front row. Points leader Phenom Eric Jones started eighth and points chasers Tyler Reddick lined up in fourth while uh, the apparently fading defending champion Matt Crafton started 13th. As the race started, Cole Custer led much of the first half of the Kroger 200. Donut Boy, Gray Galding, led a few laps after starting 7th, but got caught up in someone else's spin and got himself a lap down from which he did not recover until well after halfway. About halfway, uh, uh, the number 8, uh, John Hunter Nemechek, uh, took the lead from Cole Custer on the outside there, but unfortunately, the on the in, ensuing, in the next caution there, that got Donut Boy his lap back there, uh, Cole Custer was caught speeding there on pit row and had to drop to the back of the pack on that restart, in which another caution came out courtesy of John Rex Townley. On the next restart, Matt Crafton punted Nemechek out of the way to take the lead, and uh, Matt Crafton's teammate, Cameron Haley, followed there for second place, and then sort of challenged a little bit there for the lead until uh, another spin brought out uh, by last week's winner there at Talladega, Timothy Peters. Uh, I think that was maybe like his third spin of the day uh, there at Martinsville. Oh, uh, I said and I said sort of a challenge that uh, uh, Haley put on his uh, teammate there because the TV people played uh, radio traffic there of Haley uh, getting team orders not to pressure his teammate Matt Crafton because of the point battle 
that the defending champion is in the midst of right now. And all I got to say about that is team orders bad. This is not Formula One. Haley got uh, put on the outside there on the last restart and unintentionally became a blocker for his teammate in the number 88. Nemechek got up to second, uh, but too late to challenge Crafton for the win. Cameron ended up third, and pole sitter uh, Cole Custer brought the double zero Silverado home fourth there for Junior Motorsports. Phenom Eric Jones finished 10th after a bad truck day, and his uh, points lead shrunk a bit to 10 points over the winner, Crafton, uh, Matt Crafton. Tyler Reddick drops back to third in points, three points behind Crafton, who is now back up to second after his uh, win there. Oh, after the Camping World Truck Race, uh, or excuse me, the next Camping World Truck Race is Friday night, coming up Friday night there at Texas. Uh, so uh, keep a lookout for it, folks. I do believe that'll be on Fox Sports 1. Uh, after the truck race, I caught the end of the Formula 1 qualifying at Mexico City. And, uh, as I flipped it uh, on CNBC, the coverage seemed to be better than their Wednesday night political coverage, but that's debatable. Hamilton uh, was fastest in, second in the second qualifying session with Sebastian Vettel second in his Ferrari and Hamilton's teammate, what's his name, in third. But in the last round of qualifying as rain threatened, Nico Rosberg put down the lap. Uh, the rain never came and Rosberg uh, won his fourth pole in a row. Another consolation for being teammates with the three-time world champion, who by the way qualified second and four-time champion Sebastian Vettel uh, would line up third for the first Grand Prix in Mexico in 23 years. So, on Sunday, I decided I would give my priority watching attention to the F1 race that was on NBC Channel 5 here, and uh, I recorded the NASCAR race. I know, I know, don't faint, folks, golly. Uh, maybe maybe it was my subconscious or something protesting a little bit about uh, how the uh, the uh, Talladega race ended the last week. But anyway, and uh, the the F1 race it turned out to be really good, and and it was over well before the good stuff started happening in Martinsville. So yes, the uh, two uh, team Mercedes silver arrows there. Uh, spent most of the time up front uh, running first and second, but uh, there, was, there was a whole lot more happening back behind them uh, from the very first lap tangle between Sebastian Vettel and uh, Daniel Ricciardo uh, all the way to the, the uh, wreck with the other uh, uh, Ferrari there. So, but the, the, the first uh, touch there cut the uh, rear tire on Vettel's Ferrari and he had to go into pits there, and he spent the rest of the race uh, trying to catch up. But uh, his day ended late in the race when he just crashed from overdriving. He was just trying too hard to get uh, his Ferrari back up front and crashed it. And this was not the Scuderia's only bad news uh, from the Mexican race, as the uh, two Finnish drivers of Kimi Raikkonen in a Ferrari and Valtteri Bottas in a Williams Mercedes battled early in the Grand Prix. Bottas gave Raikkonen a front wheel to uh, run over there and when he bounced up over it he destroyed his rear dispension, uh, suspension there while Valtteri Bottas just drove away to a podium finish. Surely he felt vindicated for uh, what ha had happened when uh, Kimi basically wrecked him a few races ago there in Russia. And the F1 official said, that's racing! So, 
Uh, Saturday, we learned that uh, Formula One isn't the only racing with team orders, and Sunday, we got to see that NASCAR isn't the only racing with payback. But, I must say that even though the Grand Prix of Mexico was excellent, the non-stop commercial breaks were very frivolous there, NBC. Uh, during the safety car laps uh, after the Vettel crash, a hard commercial break would have just been much, much better. Okay, uh, what's his name? Uh, went on to win the uh, 2015 uh, uh, to win with the 2015 world champion finishing second there and after sending his fellow Finn there flying Volteri Botas finished the Grand Prix of Mexico on the third step of the podium there. So the next Formula One race is in a couple of weeks in San Paulo. So if you want a ticket to the next Grand Prix, you're going to have to get a Brazilian. Also on Sunday, NASCAR had a little Sprint Cup race there at the oldest racing venue uh, on their series schedule there in Martinsville, Virginia. The Joker started on the race, uh, started the race on the pole. Uh, with fellow chaser Martin Truex Jr. on the front row with him. Uh, Jeff Gordon started fifth in his final race around the paperclip shaped track there. The Joker led a few laps there early in the race, uh, but he led the most overall with a couple of uh, over uh, 200, I think two, 207 something, it was his uh, lap led total. Truex also uh, led early there from his second starting position, as well as other chasers, Jeff Gordon, Kevin Harvick, and old bad Brad Kaslowski, who also led, uh, he, I think he was second uh, most laps with around 140, 143 uh, laps that uh, he led. Until, that was until he had run in with another past champion, that was set off by teammate games that he and Bad uh, the Joker uh, were playing there on restarts. But first, for perspective, I want to mention that with about 80-something laps to go, after a race full of problems between the number 38 and the GoDaddy number 10, Danica Patrick attempted a payback move on David Gilliland that basically did more damage to her car, um, but all NASCAR did was wave the caution flag and line them back up. Uh, why was she not parked for the remainder of the race for her actions? So uh, after a few more spins and uh, wall scrapes and more restart games from the Penske twins, Matt Kenseth had 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 about enough of their go their games there on restarts. So as the uh, field restarted around 60 something laps to go, Matt really dove in behind. Uh, he, he tried to uh, get into that Penske Twin one-two lockout by falling right behind the Joker around Bad Brad, but Bad Brad was not having any of it and drove into the side of the number twenty dollar general toyota turning matt sideways into both the number two uh, penske ford and also the hapless number forty one monster chevrolet ss of kurt bush on whom brad blamed the wreck he said that uh... that uh... kurt had slammed into the back of him at the beginning of the race well that's because of all those uh... brake checks that y'all are doing so anyway all three cars were in need of repair as the joker just drove away unharmed there then a dozen laps later as matt the brat limped around in a broken number twenty toyota camry and the joker led at the short track there all scores were settled, and controversy was ignited. Yeah, yeah, and, and by now you've seen it. You've seen it. Matt DeBrat versus Joker Logano, and I'm trying not to take sides because, and it's, and, and you'll see it's hard. It's I, I it's hard not to take sides. But you know, we're talking about a driver 
of a Toyota who was awarded the 2000 Rookie of the Year uh, award there over my driver uh, who you know had more wins than, than uh, Matt did and and the driver of a Ford that you know that won last uh, last week and well not won but was awarded the win uh, there at Talladega over my favorite driver so I shouldn't care I, I, I don't really but I don't really like Joey the Joker Logano. He is not sliced bread to me. He is just a pile of dough. His father's dough. If it wasn't for racing, he would probably just loaf his whole life. Anyway, uh, Matt is, uh, is easier to like because he's so low-key until now. I was wondering how he ever got uh, the nickname The Brat until now. Like Dale Jr. said after finishing fourth at Martinsville there, don't wreck Matt Kenseth. I tell you right now, do not wreck that boy. <sighs> the chase format seems to have brought out the bad side of a lot of drivers, and one champion has decided that the way the joke races is not how NASCAR champions race. So I hope the Joker learns some respect for his chosen sport and profession. Or, or, or maybe he can just go on back to uh, Connecticut and play hockey in a rink that his daddy can buy for him. But uh, what I think does not matter. Not really. What matters is what NASCAR thinks, and we found that out Tuesday. But first, the end of the race and... Yes, there was a finish, a great finish, a feel-good finish, with Jeff Gordon battling off challenges to win his 93rd career victory and punch his ticket to the championship final round race there at Homestead in his final season of racing in NASCAR. That's fairy tale, Hollywood stuff, race fans. And, and it was nice to once again see some important NASCAR history from the future NASCAR Hall of Famer. And until the talking head showed up, that was the story of the race. But all too soon, Gordon's monumental victory was overshadowed by the Kenseth Logano controversy. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed seeing the Joker getting taken down a peg. But I would rather not hear about it wall to wall until the next green flag, which is Sunday at Texas, the place of Dale Jr.'s first cup win way back in the year 2000. Texas. Texas was also the site of Dale Jr.'s first win in what is now the Xfinity Series, Weyer Backer in 1998 during the uh, uh, NASCAR's 50th anniversary season and the Xfinity Series is there at Texas this weekend too. Uh, there on Saturday along with, as I said before, the Camping World Truck Series on Friday. Yep, all the racing this weekend is NASCAR and it is all at Texas which I have been told is a veritable speed palace. I hope to go there someday on my bucket list of things to do. Let me get me a drink. Okay. Monday. Brown did something for me lately and delivered my new die cast from Talladega. Here we have the winning race version of Junior's Talladega win from last spring. And here is his Microsoft car that people around here ought to be able to appreciate there. And the Mountain Dew Chevrolet that I had hoped to see in Victory Lane last uh, week at Talladega. Along with this really nice Xfinity uh, Hellman's Junior Motorsports Camaro 
that has a very low production number of 709. So only 708 other Dale Jr. race fans have a die cast like this. I do have uh, smaller production number additions there in 124 scale cars, but, but not very many. Uh, Tuesday brought me back to full scale re reality when the die was cast about 3 p.m. here when I was stunned to hear of the draconian measures dictated by NASCAR in regards to the 2003 Cup champion Matt Kenseth and his run-in with young startup, young whippersnapper there, young upstart, excuse me, uh, Joey Logano. I do not agree with, his, with this suspension. Uh, I do, do agree, however, with the 70% of race fans in a Fox Sports poll who said Matt should have received no penalty at all. I agree with the race fans in the stands at Martinsville who cheered the actions of the slighted former champion. I don't refer to Logano as the Joker because I like young Mr. Pile of Dough. He has a history of ruining races uh, back to a, a K&N race, uh, combine race that I watched in Irwindale. Irwindale, California a half dozen years ago. I watched him take out the leader uh, in the number 83 there, Peyton Sellers, on the last corner of the last lap. <sighs> and again, in California on the big track in Fontana a couple of years ago, the Joker wrecked uh, Denny Hamlin and himself letting the Toad win a race. So Logano is basically a, a a joker that is dangerous. The last thing he needs to be is a Sprint Cup champion, folks. Well, Matt is going to appeal this unjust and confusing ruling uh, NASCAR has levied, but his season is over. It has been since uh, Kansas. And today I'm uh, saying that uh, he is going to appeal, but if it doesn't work out uh, tomorrow, that uh, Phenom Eric Jones will be in the car there at uh, Texas. <sighs> oh, and that Danica girl got a $50,000 fine and docked 25 points for trying a payback move on the number 38 of David Gilliland. Her problem was her mouth and uh, how she telegraphed her intentions to NASCAR and the rest of the world there. Maybe she, hopefully she had learned by now to filter her thoughts before broadcasting them on her radio. Because people are listening, you know, not just your crew chief and spotter. Hopefully NASCAR, though, will now keep an eye on uh, David Gilliland, who has been messing with Danica back there in, uh, with the also-rans back in the back for much of the season. But all this controversy should sell tickets for Texas this coming weekend. I hope uh, Matt is there, but either way, I will watch because this is my sport. But NASCAR, y'all got to quit making these bad calls. So check in with me next week after whatever happens in uh, Texas. Uh, it's a happening place. Last year with uh, run-ins between Matt Kenseth and Bad Brad uh, there, uh, after the race that led to confrontations in the garage there post-race, you know. And after all of that, uh, the, the pushing and shoving with uh, Keselowski and, uh, and uh, 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 Jeff Gordon and, and, and all that fun stuff, who even remembers who won the race uh, there last November? Oh, oh yeah, that was Jimmy Johnson. Well, hopefully it will be uh, that fun to watch this year. Maybe Junior can win and everybody else can fight. But I will be right there. Uh, I won't be there in Texas. I'll be right there in front of the TV watching. And I'll be here uh, talking about it next week because, you know, that's what I do. And I'm Stock Car Scott. You know, that's what I do. And I hope you will join me next week. Thanks for watching this week. And tune in next week 
same stock car time and same stock car channel. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next week.